Is something prophetic happening on April the 8th, 2024? On April the 8th, a rare solar eclipse is going to occur over America, plunging some parts of the country into total darkness in the middle of the day. This is causing quite a stir, both in the secular and religious news. For example, an online post by USA Today states, The total solar eclipse on April the 8th is causing such a stir because the rare event where the shadow of the moon will plunge a narrow strip of land into darkness in the middle of the day is an astronomical experience like no other that will be unusually accessible to millions of people. This is made possible by the trajectory of this eclipse, which will be from Texas all the way up through Maine. Many prophecy teachers are claiming this eclipse is a sign from God of impending doom on America, quoting Genesis chapter 1 verse 14, where God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. The lights in the firmament this is talking about is the sun, moon, and stars. And since it said they would serve as signs, many prophecy teachers are interpreting this to mean prophetic signs. Know this of a certain that the heavens were made for signs. Now, Whenever I look at a sign, I'm looking at something that proclaims a prophetic message. That's what a sign is. If I was holding up a sign, it would have a message on it, right? So this is actually a prophetic message. But the original Hebrew word from which signs is translated from, oth, is typically understood to refer to celestial or astronomical signs. In other words, the sun, moon, and stars are appointed by God for specific purposes to mark time, days, and years, and to serve as signs and indicators of seasons. These celestial bodies were intended to serve as markers for agriculture and religious festivals, as well as for navigation and other practical purposes. Now, the Bible does talk about some prophetic signs in the sun, moon, and stars that I'll talk about later, but that is not what Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 is referring to. I read several online commentaries about this just to make sure and every single one of them confirmed this. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 is not referring to anything prophetic or supernatural. And the danger of interpreting it that way is it can lead you to conclude that every astronomical event like blood moons or eclipses are prophetic or some kind of warning from God. And this reminds me of the four blood moons prophecy of 2014 and 2015. Some prophecy teachers like John Hagee and Mark Biltz were claiming that the blood moon tetrads were prophetic signs that something significant was about to happen. One of the scriptures that John Hagee based this on is Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 as is seen in this clip from CBN News. Let's talk about what the Bible says about signs in the heavens and the moon and the stars. You know, Jesus even says, talks about signs in the heavens. Yes. Um, give us some examples in the Bible where this is talked about. Well, you begin at Genesis 1:14, where God said that he'd created the stars and the heavens, that they would be for signs and seasons. The word signs in Hebrew means signals. So God is saying early on in Genesis that he uses the heavens to communicate with men. John Hagee also quoted a few other Bible verses that talk about the moon becoming red like blood. You go to Joel, the second chapter, uh, the 30th verse. The Bible says, and I will show you wonders in the heavens. The sun shall be darkened, that's a solar eclipse, and the moon shall refuse to give its light. That is a, that is a blood moon before the great and notable day of the Lord. Now, that exact description is given again in Acts the second chapter on the day of Pentecost, when Peter quotes those exact words that uh, came out of the mouth of Joel. And then Jesus in uh, the book of Luke says that, I will show you signs and wonders in the heavens and in the sky. And then John Hagee made a series of predictions about what he believed would happen in the wake of the four blood moons. I believe 
that in these next two years, we're going to see something dramatic happen in the Middle East involving Israel that will change the course of history in the Middle East and impact the whole world. I think that we are seeing the, the genesis of that by America as a nation separating itself from Israel. For the first time in American history, we have leadership that's putting daylight between Jerusalem and Washington. Our nation has just entered into an agreement with Iran in which we gave them $7 billion and they are now going forward full force with centrifuges and the development of a nuclear bomb. The only reason Iran will not develop a nuclear bomb will be that Israel chooses a military solution to that crisis. I believe if that happens, that will start a series of events that will change the course of world history. If Israel does not, it will still change the course of world history because Iran will use that nuclear weapon to bully the Middle East to come under its canopy and they will release uh, nuclear suitcase bombs in this country and people will be willing to uh, give Iran anything that it wants for peace. We are facing something in the immediate future that's going to cause the world to change and change forever. That was recorded in 2014. And of course, nothing even remotely to that happened in the following two years or since then. Iran isn't threatening anyone with nuclear bombs or setting off suitcase bombs in the United States. And the United States' relationship with Israel is stronger than ever. So how could John Hagee have been so wrong when it came to the Four Blood Moons prophecy? It's because he had a misunderstanding of the timing and sequence of events connected with the Blood Moon prophecy. And many people are making the same mistake with the April 8th eclipse. The Blood Moon prophecy in the Bible, along with the sun being darkened, follows a sequence of events. We can read about that in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 13, which states, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Did you notice the sequence of events here? There are four specific events mentioned which the blood moon has to be in line with in order for it to be prophetic. First, there was a great earthquake. Then, the sun turned black. Afterwards, the moon became like blood. And then, the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Not only that, this sequence of events was to occur at a specific period of time in history. Matthew chapter 24 verse 29 reveals that these signs were to appear immediately after the tribulation of the dark ages, stating immediately after the tribulation of those days, this is talking about the dark ages, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Christians faced fierce persecution by the papacy during its 1260 year reign in the Dark Ages. As that reign was nearing its end in 1798 and persecution against Christians by the papacy had ceased, the end time signs involving the sun, moon, and stars began to appear. The first of these signs was the great earthquake mentioned in Revelation chapter 6. This corresponds to the Lisbon earthquake on November the 1st, 1755. This is one of the greatest earthquakes in history. Its magnitude was estimated to be between 8.5 and 9.0 on the Richter scale. It hit the port city of Lisbon, Portugal especially hard, but it was also felt in parts of Europe, Africa, and even parts of North America. An online post entitled Lisbon Earthquake of 1755 by Britannica.com explains that an estimated 60,000 people were killed in Lisbon alone. About 12,000 buildings were destroyed by the force of the earthquake and a tsunami 20 feet high swept Lisbon. In addition, 
fires burned throughout the city for six days after the earthquake. 25 years later, the next signs mentioned in the prophecy appeared. The darkening of the sun and the moon becoming as blood. This was fulfilled by the New England Dark Day on May 19, 1780. An online post entitled The New England Dark Day, May 19, 1780 by the New England Historical Society explains, The New England Dark Day was the darkest day of the American Revolution, a day as dark as night, a day when a candle was needed to see anything outside at noon. On May 19, 1780, the sun came up as usual, but then the skies over New England darkened as far north as Portland, Maine, and as far south as New Jersey. The dark day inspired terror, panic, and puzzlement. Men prayed and women wept. Thousands left off work and took to taverns and churches for solace. Children were sent home from school. Bewildered chickens went to their roosts. Frightened cattle returned to their stalls. The night birds whistled and frogs peeped as they did at midnight. Another online post entitled The Dark Day, May 19, 1780 by historic Ipswich.net explains, the first half of the night was hideously dark, and no ray of light from moon or star could penetrate the darkness until after midnight when a blood-red moon emerged. The last of the prophetic signs, the stars falling from heaven, was fulfilled in the Great Leonid Shower of November the 13th, 1833. An online post entitled The Night the Stars Fell, the 1833 Meteor Shower by ExplorersWeb.com states, It was the night the stars fell. In 1833, people across North America witnessed a powerful celestial event that appeared downright apocalyptic. Hundreds of thousands of streams of fire lit up the night sky in a massive shower that lasted from the early hours of the morning to the cusp of sunrise. Reports from across the country on November the 12th and November the 13th described the meteor shower as like snowflakes or a shower of stars. This reflects the huge number of meteors visible from Earth that night, a whopping 150,000 meteors per hour. An article from the Arkansas Gazette by William Woodruff described it as a remarkable phenomena that could be seen in every quarter and flying in every direction, though generally toward the southwest and kept up an incessant illumination of the heavens. By the way, it is possible these signs will repeat themselves in quick succession immediately before the second coming of Jesus. One hint of that may be the great earthquake that is to take place under the seventh seal in Revelation chapter 16 verse 18. But this total eclipse that is taking place on April the 8th has nothing to do with that because it doesn't follow the proper sequence of events or timing. If you have been inspired by the prophecies that I have shared with you, you could find more information about them and other prophecies of the Bible in the book, The Great Controversy. The Great Controversy is one of my favorite Christian books. It talks about church history, Bible doctrine, and Bible prophecy. I'll leave a link in the video description to a beautifully illustrated large print version of The Great Controversy, which you can order. It is an affiliate link, so I earn a small commission from your purchase, which helps keep my channel going at no additional cost to you. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, when God said he set the lights in the firmament of the heavens as signs, he wasn't talking about prophetic signs. Otherwise, every solar eclipse or blood moon could be interpreted as some kind of message or judgment of God, which they're not. Sometimes a solar eclipse or blood moon is just a rare astronomical phenomenon that allows us to appreciate the beauty and complexity of the universe, reflecting the creativity and power of God's creation. Just like Psalm chapter 19 verses 1 through 2 tells us, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day 
utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. With all that being said, prophecy does talk about signs in the sun, moon, and stars before the second coming of Jesus Christ, but that was to occur during a specific time in history and according to a specific sequence. That has already been fulfilled and will possibly happen again right before the second coming of Jesus. Understanding this is crucial because many prophecy teachers and Christian influencers like to take these signs out of sequence whenever there is a rare eclipse or blood moon and claim that something prophetic is happening when it's not. Another thing, just because something is rare doesn't mean it's prophetic. In order for something to be prophetic, it needs to be supported by scripture. And this April 8th eclipse is not supported by scripture. I fear all the predictions being made about the solar eclipse is going to get many sincere yet ignorant Christians hopes up. And then when nothing happens, their hopes are going to be dashed to pieces. And it also just makes Christianity look bad. This will give critics of Christianity an opportunity to mock Christians after the April the 8th eclipse comes and goes and nothing happens. Do you think something prophetic is happening on April the 8th with the solar eclipse? Or do you think people are making a big deal out of nothing? Let me know in the comments down below. The news headlines of today parallel the signs of the end times that Jesus warned about in Matthew chapter 24. Wars, earthquakes, famines, and pestilences are common occurrences and increasing in frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said they would before his return. This is a testimony that we are living in the final moments of Earth's history. Yet many people are clueless about the times in which we are living and the prophetic events that are about to transpire. Learn more about this by clicking on the screen to watch our video entitled, People Have No Idea What's About to Happen. Also, please like and share this video to help spread God's word. Thank you for watching and God bless you.